Hey everyone, it's Andrea from Gaslit Nation. I wanted to check in on the debate dread that many of us felt. There was this sick feeling when Kamala Harris, one of the most qualified people to ever run for president, had to share a debate stage with a serial rapist, convicted felon, Russian asset who belongs in prison. And so if you're feeling a certain way, that's called grief over all that we've lost because of Trump, including abortion, health care, affirmative action, just so many laws, rights rolled back that are now designed to stop progress and further entrench far right control in America and terror. And not to mention the war in Ukraine, because Putin would have never launched a total war invasion. And that that whole path was laid under Trump when Trump came to power through a Kremlin operation known as the 2016 campaign by Donald Trump for president, ran by Paul Manafort, a longtime Kremlin operative. So there's a lot of grief in our bones now, and it gets triggered with a big events like that debate. I wanted it to get over with. Like, I'm so glad that Kamala Harris has a kink for standing up to bullies and it shows her comfort level in what she did with him, like baiting him so easily. This is a woman that when she says she has faced criminals like him throughout her career as a prosecutor, she means it. Like, that was genuine. That was, yes, it was preparation, but it was also a comfort level that she has deep inside. And that was very comforting to see. This is a woman that had a tough upbringing, being raised essentially by a single mother and, and you know, being an older sister, older siblings know that kind of pressure. All that inner strength came out on that stage. And it just felt so, yes, hopeful and comforting, but at the same time sick that she almost had to like Hunger Game styles, like pay, be tribute, you know, to face off with that monster. So I just wanted to check in with everyone and remind everyone who needs this grounding exercise that Donald Trump came to power in 2016 by breaking the law several which ways. There was the highly illegal $10 million campaign donation from the dictatorship of Egypt, with the, which the Washington Post just reported on. We did a whole deep dive discussion on that. There was, of course, the election interference case, the Stormy Daniels case, which a jury found him guilty on. And then, of course, there was the Mueller report, the Senate bipartisan intelligence report, and several amazing investigative journalist books like uh, House of Trump, House of Putin, exposing Trump's decades-long dependency on dirty Russian money, that you're proving that he's a Kremlin asset, that he was developed all this time to do what he's doing now to basically allow the Kremlin to enact state capture and destroy America from within. It, there used to be just a handful of these uh, Kremlin dis disinformation agents. Now it's the whole entire Republican Party. When you look at guys like Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just what the DOJ got around to doing. Okay, so there's so much more of them. As I always say, if it sounds like a paid Kremlin shill, it's a paid Kremlin shill. So this is where we are, America, and none of this is normal. So what I want to leave you with is this. If Trump is an illegitimate president who came to power illegally, breaking the law in several different ways, then what does that make his judges? They're illegitimate too, especially those on the Supreme Court that are gleefully rolling back our rights, endangering countless people across this country. So all of us need to, step one, get Kamala elected, leave it all out on the field, and step two, once she's president, fight like hell for court reform. Fight like hell for court reform. Every single Trump appointed judge needs to be scrutinized for impeachment, starting with the three justices on, on the Supreme Court, especially the least qualified Amy Coney Barrett, who was shoved through. Okay, Brett Kavanaugh, his finances, who paid off his debt and why? Another Clarence Thomas case. Clarence Thomas needs to go. All right, and, and Justice Alito, my God. So we need to just relentlessly, relentlessly go after especially Trump's judges, because they're illegitimate just like he is. He, Trump broke the law several different ways to become president. That makes him illegitimate. That makes his judges illegitimate. And we need to stay on that. We need to fight for court reform, raise our voices. And that's what we're going to do together. We're going to get it done. Be relentless. Be like water.
erode that corruption at the base. That's what we're doing. And as part of that, I've, we've got a lot of amazing events planned here at Gaslit Nation to get us through these critical next couple months. Because it's not just election day, November 5th. We have to win the war and then win the peace. Because after she's announced the winner, get ready for whatever comes next and just be vigilant and just stay engaged and just help get our country across the finish line in January and then move on to fight for reforms after that. So to help us through this critical time, we're doing political salons at Gaslit Nation every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. I put out a Zoom link. Folks from across the country, gas, longtime Gaslit Nation listeners, come together. We vent. We share stories wherever we are in our part of the world. We had our first one. The conversation, of course, got weird, like like late night slumber party weird. It was beautiful. I'm going to post a recording of it soon. Thank you to all who attended. And then we're going to do a bunch of live tapings this month and next month. We have, of course, the phone banks for calling to the big battleground states. To get details on all these events ahead, check out the show notes of this video. Please come to a phone bank. They really do make a difference. They really do make a difference when these victories are on the margin. It's going to come down to a couple dozen votes, a couple hundred votes in some of these districts for Congress, as well as in some of these battleground states where Trump's goon squad of lawyers are throwing every tool in their legal warfare toolkit, that their dark arts that they can at Arizona. They're openly trying to steal Georgia and, of course, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. And so we have to we have to just do the work right now, leave it all out in the field in the precious time that we have left, because once a dictator gets in, there's no do overs. And then Project 2025 goes from so-called red states to law of the land. And we can't let that happen. The whole world is then gone, right? And so, yeah, but we're going to get through it. We're going to fight like hell together. We're going to win. We're going to totally transform America in the years ahead. And we're going to leave a safer and more peaceful world with sustainability and greater fairness and equality for all, because that is where our grassroots movement is headed. And um, I've never seen America more activated. I've I've been at this for a very long time. My first job out of college as a as a community organizer. And I know some people are feeling pretty hopeless right now and, and they, they, they feel that dread and despair. But at the same time, I've never seen my country more engaged. I've never seen young people more, more active running for office, helping get out the vote. This is different. We've had a political uprising in America in recent years. Unfortunately, it's thanks to Trump, but it's real, it's there. And this political revolution in our lives, it's staying. It's staying because we're in a time of crisis and we understand now the value of community. We understand now the value of our voice, our vote. And as part of that, I want to also share with you that we're going to be doing a how to make a podcast workshop on October 24, coming together that evening at 7 p.m. Eastern, where I'm going to walk everyone through the ins and outs of podcasting, what to know, why are we doing that? Because we need your voice now more than ever. Um, what journalists don't like to talk about, because there's a lot of shame in it, is that there's been a decimation of journalism jobs, newsroom jobs, especially in recent years. The decline in media jobs is, is just, a, it's, it's a crisis of corruption, because what happens when you lose journalists? The corrupt flourish. A lot of crimes are going undetected. A lot of bad things are happening. So wherever you live in this country, you are the eyes and ears for the rest of us. So share your story, share what's going on in your community, get used to that. It's important. And, and so come in and find your voice if you don't haven't done so already. And I can walk you through how to do that. Trust me, I'm one of the most introverted people you can imagine. I know that might be surprising to some because I talk for a living, but if I can do it, you can do it. So learn how at our podcast workshop on October 24, that's going to be for Patreon supporters at the truth teller level and higher. And then look out for our upcoming Q&A for our Democracy Defender level and folks in higher. If you're at the Democracy Defender level, submit your questions. That shapes our bonus Q&A show. I always love getting your questions and, I, and, and what, learning what keeps you up at night, what you're reading, what you're seeing, and, and tracking all of your opinions out there and insights. I love the Q&As. And so look out for a call for questions from you all soon. Submit your questions there or in a private message if you're at the Democracy Defender level or higher. And of course, to our listeners in the New York City area or, or nearby, Terrell Starr, my dear friend, is home from Ukraine, thank God, and he's coming to the live taping of Gaslit Nation on Monday, September 16th at the Ukrainian Institute of America. And the good folks at Patreon have given me 
commemorative tote bags for the event to give out to the Patreon supporters who get in free for that event. So what, so whatever level you're at, you are on the guest list, my dear. I'm so excited to see you Monday night, hopefully at the live taping. We'll do more fun events as the time goes on because we're all here to sustain each other and carry each other through in this marathon, not a sprint because democracy is a lifestyle. The people are awake now. We know what's going on. We see it clearly. We believe our eyes and our ears. None of this is normal. So we're going to put the safeguards on to our democracy that that finally need to be there and force accountability, demand accountability, starting with Trump's judges. We're illegitimate, just like he is. Thank you, everybody.